We are talking with AKA Fisher. And so your most recent uh, work in the ruins of Dreamland, you talk a lot about Christ and trusting God. How did that album come to be? And uh, tell us why this is different or how this is different from your previous work. Yeah, so um, with this album, you know, it's funny. The, the idea actually started as a result of me uh, watching a documentary. I mm. saw this documentary about this um, abandoned theme park, or at least it was abandoned. It's been demolished since, but um, it just it really sparked my interest, and um, that's where the idea kind of grew from. And so basically, Dreamland, uh, this sort of fictional amusement park, it's like a an allegory for the the dreams that we have, you know. Mm. And these dreams aren't you know bad things in and of themselves. Uh, but sometimes when we lose focus of the main thing, when we when we um, forget what our real purpose is in Christ, then those dreams can kind of turn into something else. You know, they can become an obsession, a distraction, an idol, right. you know. And um, so that's essentially what Dreamland represents in this, uh, this album. And uh, it's sort of my journey of, you know, coming to terms with that fact, uh, you know, for me specifically, the dream had to do with my music. You know, I had all these dreams about what I wanted to do and how I was going to make music and, you know, I was going to be super successful in that and, and everything. Uh, and that became my idol and my distraction. And I had to come to terms with that fact that I had lost sight of why I was supposed to make be making music in the first place. Mm. And uh, so for me, I guess really the album is about letting go. We have to let go of those things um, that we may think we need in order to receive the things that God knows is best for us. Mm, I love that explanation. That's crazy. You know, a lot of artists, you know, make an album. They're just like, all right, let's just make good music. Let's, let's do it. And, you know, sometimes they don't even really think about, um, the, the, the intention behind it. Or if they do, it's sometimes it's misconvoluted and can't really seek it out. But, but your, uh, album was just, here it is. Drop the mic. This is what it's all about. Letting go. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I just always felt like when it comes to music, like music is such an opportunity, such a gift from God. And so it's like, I feel like I need, I don't have anything to say. I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting your time. You right. know, so I always want to go into it really, really have something meaningful to say. Yeah, I love that. Was there a song on the album that you had to like keep coming back to to finish? Like, you're like, oh, like Uncle Johnny or, you know, all that or, or Dark Ride or whatever. Uh, like, yeah. oh man, I need to come back and do that. That verse was, eh, it could be better, you know, like, because sometimes <laughs> artists all the time, including me, because like everybody does this. They're like, oh man, it needs, it needs this, it needs that. Because really, when, when you, yeah. if we're being honest, like music is never really done, you know. Music, right? You know, production. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, uh, you know, it was like my dad was just saying. My cause dad was is an artist. You know, he paints and things like that. Right. And so, what he would say to me is, uh, you know, you just got to know when to put the brush down. And so, for <laughs> me, that has been, that has historically been a struggle, knowing when to put the put the paintbrush down. Yeah. But um, what was the last thing that uh, I said? Drop the paintbrush. <laughs> right, right. Learning when to drop the paintbrush. I have I have struggled with that, but. Um, I would say specifically on this album, I remember two songs in particular we had to have done like, I want to say like 10 plus versions of, and those two songs are Fun House and Uncle Johnny. And I don't know exactly why it was. I had such a hard time getting those two done, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that, that you hear on now. That is hilarious. Yeah. I'm telling you, artists all the time, they're like, you know what? I got to fix this. I got to fix that. Or EQ this, EQ that, you know? <laughs> yeah. All that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So now besides being an artist, you are also a part of Tentmaker Music. Now, I know there's a whole big ordeal, but tell us a little bit about what Tentmaker is and what your role is in there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, basically, Technical Music was created this 2019 is about the time when, when I took over as owner. And um, it was founded by Joe Bragg in 2017. And um, basically, Technical Music, it was just created to serve as both a platform and a resource for independent Christian artists to really help them, uh, you know, go further and, and reach more people with their art. Um, and help to, you know, guide them in that because that, that can be a, a tough journey to go on. I know from experience. Mm. And, uh, so we wanted to, to be there as a, uh, you know, a resource and a place for them to make themselves heard. Mm, I love that. How have you seen God move through Tent Maker uh, in the past two years? Yeah, uh, in 
so many ways. It's been amazing. I think that the biggest thing is we really wanted to help cultivate like a healthier culture of Christian artists, mm-hmm. you know, who um, recognize that, you know, we all ultimately have the same mission. And um, I think that, you know, it was difficult. A lot of us and the artists, especially because there's not a lot of room for us in the industry that, you know, what we're, our message isn't particularly welcomed in the industry. A lot of us were kind of like we were just by ourselves on an island. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's been really, really great to see a community coming together out of this. Um, you know, we've got a Discord server now where people are, you know, coming in and chatting and hanging out and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's just great. Just uh, see all the interactions at the shows and, the, you know, the different music props that we've collaborated on. Yeah. It's been really, really great. And it's just, you know, awesome to see that that fellowship and that camaraderie. I loved it. Yeah, because I saw your guys' show at Getty, And, uh, you know, yes. there was a really big positive response. I mean, it wasn't the biggest concert in the world. It wasn't like 3 billion people, but people yeah. come to the stage and they're bouncing up and down and they're hearing, <laughs> you know, the word of God as well in between those songs and you're just witnessing to them. And it's amazing to see uh, when I turn around and just look at all the people, uh, you know, just, just either closing their eyes or praying or just having a good time fed the word of God. Yeah. It's, it's amazing to see that. Yeah, that, that is that is a memory I will I will forever cherish. I was so happy with how everything went. God just really did amazing things, and um, so I'm I'm looking forward to, to seeing more of that in the coming years. Definitely, definitely. So um, once again, we're talking with AKA Fisher, and according to JesusFreakHideout.com, I did stalk you a little bit for this. Okay. <laughs> 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 I hope that's okay, man. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so I just want to get really deep into this because I only have a few minutes with you. So according to JesusFreakHideout.com, times hit you really hard in life. And, you know, like everybody else, uh, they hit you hard. Uh, and you're battling with depression and battling with a lot of internal struggles. How did God deliver you from that? And was that like the point where music became more of a passion for you? Was that like a launching pad? Um, I think that's maybe where my music became a little more focused. Mm. I think I always liked music and it was always something that was important to me. But I think that's where it became more focused. I just got to a really, really low point, um, you know, despite, you know, being raised in a Christian home and all that. Like I was really at that point on the, you know, verge of like atheism. I mean, I was just mm. really out there and not in a good place mentally, emotionally it was all over the place. And, um, uh, so it was, it was tough. It was a very, it was a very dark moment for me, but in that moment, um, you know, I just cried out. It's like, you know, it was as full as just me crying out, God, if you are there, if you are real, I recognize that my only purpose is to serve you. And so I just, I need help right now. So if you're real, like, just give me something like I need, you know, and, um, there was no like crazy, like flashing lights or, you know, <laughs> anything like that. Some, you know, whatever it was just, I had peace and it got me through. It kept me from, uh, you know, uh, taking that step off the ledge. And uh, there it grew into a hunger. And I wanted to read God's word. And then I got into apologetics and, um, and it just, it just kept going from there. And then, you know, it took me to this whole new place in my life where I've just seen deliverance from so many things, so many spiritual issues that I was struggling with. Um, you know, I've really experienced true joy for myself as opposed to just kind of knowing about it from growing up in church. Right. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was amazing, and God is just so merciful and so good. I love that. Yeah, peace beyond all understanding, am I right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, like, now, now I know what they were talking about in church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. <laughs> Sometimes it takes getting to the bottom to look up, because there's only one way to look when you're at the right. very, very bottom. Oh, you got to look up, man. Yep. Yeah. Once again, yep. talking with AKA Fisher. Uh, now your song, all that, the remix is first of all, amazing, phenomenal. We love it here. at Yes. FM. <laughs> Can you tell <laughs> us, you. Hey, no problem. Can you tell us what went into that song and how is it? Because I know you have so many people on that track. Uh, how is it working with all the other artists? There's so many of them. Oh man, it was amazing. It was, and, and you know, when you have like, you know, what they call like a posse cut like that, where you got like a bunch of artists, on the same thing, it, it can go a lot of different ways, you know, because right. we're dealing with people who have very different styles and, you know, it, you know, you just don't know sometimes what you're going to get. And, and so for it to turn out the way that it did, 
I mean, it was just amazing. I got to work with um, Chosen Be Nice, who I've been a huge fan of here in Texas um, for, for a while now. I got to work with V. Rose, who I've been a huge fan of since way back. Um, my little brother is on the song, Golden Goose. Uh, I mean, it was just, you know, it was awesome. I, it was just a real blessing, and, you know, it became, like, just an awesome opportunity for fellowship. And, um, yeah, I... I like I said, it as far as I know, this is the first time that I've I've had a song make it to FM radio. So I gotta <laughs> thank you guys for that, and I'm just like so so incredibly happy. It's it's amazing. It's amazing to to hear the song too. I mean, the first time I heard it, I was like, oh my goodness, this is you went straight into it, man. As like not even <laughs> wasting a second. I was like, dude, this is good. <laughs> So we put it on the air, man. But uh, again, how was it? Uh, so Golden Goose is your younger brother, correct? Yes, younger brother. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool to hear. I didn't even know that because I, I met I met him at Engetti, and I was yeah. like, I was like, he kind of looks like that guy, and that guy kind of <laughs> looks like that guy. <laughs> but I never yep, put the no. two and two together until today. <laughs> yep, no, that's that's the, that's my little brother. That's my little brother. I'm that is awesome. Well, hey, I, I'm, that's really cool that that music is flowing through the family, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's, it's been. It's been really, really cool because God just blessed me in such a way to, you know, be surrounded by very, very talented uh, musicians. Uh, I mean, even my wife is, is a worship leader, and mm. she's just an amazing singer with an amazing voice. And then um, uh, my her her cousin, um, so the family I married into, her cousin actually produced one of the songs on In the Ruins of Dreamland. So, you know, it's just been amazing. Like, nice. God just has kept <laughs> connecting me with all these people. And then, you know, my dad is a musician, and my little brother. And so it's funny. It's funny how that goes. (laughs) That is super, super cool. Well, Hey, do you have any other work on the horizon that we can look forward to? Yes, definitely. Uh, I'm working on a few things right now. Some of them I can't get into too much detail about. Um, I'm, I I can say I have one with, uh, Zay Hill, uh, that I'm working on and that one should be done pretty soon. And I'll make sure I get that to you as soon as we have it. But, uh, but yes, definitely, definitely working on a lot of new material. Awesome. Once again, we were talking with AKA Fisher. Again, thanks so much for coming on Stay on the Line. And one last question for you. What is yeah. one thing you would say to aspiring artists out there that are listening right now? Oh, man. I think that the best thing, the best thing I could tell you is just keep God the main thing. And mm-hmm. everything else will fall into place. Whatever it is you're supposed to be doing, that's what you're going to be doing. And there's nothing that anyone can do about it. There's nothing anybody can do to stop it. But you can, you know, get your right. take yourself off track if you're not keeping God in focus. Awesome. Awesome. Again, thank you so much, Fisher, for coming on. We really appreciate it.